Mosingishu County Bursary and Skills Development Support Fund for the year ended 2020 had a qualified opinion. Uh, the issues which were raised, uh, number one on presentation, uh, the matter has not been resolved. It's not addressed, Honorable Chair, sorry. The number two on qualification and supported bursary disbursements. Uh, the matter, we are still looking at it and we we'll request that uh, we verify further with your permission, Chair. It's not addressed. On lawfulness and effectiveness in use of public resources, uh, on other matter, the issue on budgetary control and performance has been addressed and resolved prior year matters have not been addressed. On lawfulness and effectiveness in use of public resources, failure to develop regulations to the Act has not been addressed. That is the summary for 2020. To the year ended June 2021. Uh, report of the Auditor General on your Singishu County Bursary and Skills Development Support Fund for the year ended 30th June 2021. Um, had a qualified opinion, inaccurate statement of changes in net assets, the matter, that is the basis for qualification, the matter has been addressed. Budgetary control and performance, that is other matter, uh, the matter has also been addressed. On report on lawfulness and effectiveness in use of public resources, the first issue on scholarships and other educational benefits has not been addressed and failure to develop regulations to the Act has also not been addressed. Oh, on effectiveness of internal controls, risk management and governance, we have one issue that is lack of risk management policy. The issue has not been addressed. That is for 2021. Proceed to the year ended June 2022. Thank you, Chair. Report of the Auditor General on Wasingishu County Bursary and Skills Development Support Fund for the year ended 30th June 22. Received qualified opinion. Number one, and support basis for qualified opinion. The issue was unsupported use of goods and services, the issue is not addressed. On effectiveness of internal controls, risk management and governance, number one, lack of internal audit function for the fund, the issue has been addressed. Number two, on bursaries and scholarships, the risk of duplicated funding of students the issue has not been addressed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Honorable members, I hope you have noted the comments by the auditor. Uh, just a, a quick review. The year ended June 2020. The auditor has noted that uh, presentation of financial statement, the matter has not been addressed. Um, this particular one is related to the query in the year ended 2021, which is inaccurate statement of changes in net assets, which has been addressed. So I think on this one, we are going to give a standard uh, recommendation, interim recommendation that we usually give. Uh, the clerk, you know what I mean. Eh? So we'll give an interim recommendation because uh, we have a standard uh, way of addressing this. 
the issue of unsupported bursary disbursement. Uh, unsupported bursary disbursement appears in the year ended June 2020. It is also It is also appearing in um, the year ended uh, Auditor, you need to guide us because uh, there is a bit of a confusion here. Unsupported bursary disbursement and uh, the query in the year ended June 2021. Scholarship and other benefits. Is there any relation? And uh, also, in the year ended 2022, the issue of bursaries and scholarship risk of duplicated funding of students. Is there any relation? Could there be any slight relation between the three queries? Thank you, Chair. The issue of bursary and scholarships, as, as it appears in the year 2022, is related to the issue of scholarships and other educational benefits, which appears in 2021. But the, the one that appears in 1920, let me just uh, explain. Unsupported bursary disbursements, this is where we did not see acknowledgement letters and receipts in acknowledgement for bursaries which were disbursed to a number of institutions. The issue, I think this issue is slightly different from those other two. Okay, so what's your advice? Because uh, we have the issue of unsupported bursary disbursement for yes. June 2020. Yes. And then we have the issue of scholarship and other education benefits for June 2022. Are you confirming the two are uh, related? The one for 2020 is, is slightly different, but the one for 2022 and 2021 are related. Okay, so yes. in the, for that matter, yes. uh, let me give directions that uh, for the year ended 2020, 2020, June 2020, we will consider the unsupported bursary as our query number one for consideration and supported bursary disbursement. Budget control and performance, the auditor says it has been addressed. There were unresolved prior year matters. Uh, maybe you need to give a comment on this. This relates to which year? Thank you, Chair. We, also, we have a report of the Auditor General for the year ended 30th June 2019, which had some issues and which, as it were, have not been addressed. We have not, we've not discussed them in the County Assembly, not even here. 2018, 2019? Yes. What are those issues? Uh, sorry, I don't have that certificate here, but there are not, two of them relate to an acknowledgement uh, another one also relates to regulations to the Act, which so are the same we, so as we what are we are going to, to cover them in, in this report. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so that query, uh, we leave it out because we are going to, to deal with it as we go on with these reports. Uh, the issue of failure to develop regulations to the Act, I think also appears in, uh, it appears in 20, the year ended June 2021. Does it also appear in the year 2022? It doesn't appear there. It appears in 2021. Yes, sir, it doesn't, no. So I therefore direct that uh, we cover that as our query number two. We cover that as query number two. 
So that means for the year ended June 2021, we are only going to cover one query, that is unsupported bursary disbursement. Let's come to 2021. An uh, accurate statement of changes in net asset, you say it was addressed. Budget control and performance, you have said it is addressed. Scholarship and other education benefits, you have indicated that it is not addressed. But you have also indicated that it is, did you say it is related to, to the one in uh, 2022? Yeah. Uh, to what extent? what extent? So let me start with the scholarships and other educational benefits, which appears in a report for the year ended 30th June 2021, or oh, entitled scholarships and other educational benefits. The issue is that management did not provide evidence to support the process of awarding of bursaries as required under section 22.4. This section 22.4 talks about the risk of duplicated funding. So, if you go to the one in 2022, it's bursaries and scholarships risk of duplicated funding of students. So the two. So, so is a recurring query. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Very well. So, so let me. Uh, therefore, the query on uh, scholarship and other education fund, which appears in 2021, is is similar to the one in 2022. So we will use the one in 2022 as our base. Um, failure to develop regulation to the act, I had indicated it should be our query number two. Uh, lack of risk management policy, this one, uh, Clark, you have a standard uh, uh, interim recommendation. So we know what we say there. So that means for the year ended uh, 2021, June, we will only cover one query, which is failure to develop regulations to the Act. Uh, we go to the last report, June, and, June 2022, and supported use of goods and services. This one, uh, auditor, you have indicated it is not addressed. Is that the case? Yes, Chief. So we will consider that as our query number three. Number? Number three. Yeah. Lack of internal audit function. Again, this one, the clerk, we have a standard, uh, in, but is also addressed. Then, uh, as I directed, Bursaries and scholarships, we cover that as a base for uh, the two years. So we'll do that as our query number four. So basically for education fund, we are going to consider those queries, four queries. I hope it's very clear to everyone. Um, so we will start with query number one, which is unsupported bursary disbursement. That is in the report for June 2020. So auditor, please uh, read the query, and then uh, governor, you will give the management response. Thank you, Chair. This is report of the Auditor General on Wasingishu County Bursary and Skills Development Support Fund for the year ended 30th June 2020. Under basis for qualified opinion. Uh, number two, unsupported bursary disbursements. The statement of receipts and payments for the year ended 30th June 2020 reflects transfers to other government units figure of Kenya shillings 93,508,190 which relates to scholarships and other educational benefits to 13,962 students from the 30 wards in the county. However, 
Acknowledgement letters to receipts from institutions for payments totaling Kenya shillings 8,137,900 were not provided for audit review. Further, no documentary evidence was provided to indicate that the County Education Fund Committee inquired whether the beneficiary students did not receive funding from other donors to avoid duplication in accordance with Section 22.4 of the Wasingishu Bursary and Skills Development Support Fund Disbursement Act 2014. Consequently, validity of bursary disbursement amount of Kenya shillings 93,508,190 for the period ending 30th June 2020 could not be confirmed. Thank you. Uh, very well. Uh, Governor, you are written response. Thank you, Chairman. This is the management response. The county acknowledges the uh, observations. By the end of financial year 2020-2019, checks totaling Kenya shillings 8,137,900 had not been presented since schools and colleges were closed due to COVID-19 pandemic. Upon opening of schools and colleges in 2021, the beneficiaries brought back the stale checks in pieces and were subsequently replaced and acknowledged, supported by Annexia 1, A, B, and C. Very well, maybe you can take us through the Annexia. Members, you can you can go through the next yes. Okay, Chairman. Uh, proceed. Yeah, we have the presented checks of annex one a list of and release and and. Re and present the checks as at 30th June 2020. And all the, all the, the list is attached. And then another annexure 1B, copies of sample stale checks. All the copies are here. And then annex 1C, copies of Sample acknowledgements, receipts, and letters, all attached. Uh, auditor, yeah, you are, I'm sure you have looked through this appendix and the response. What's your comments? Oh, thank you, Chair. Our response to this, especially looking at uh, these annexures on uh, unrepresented checks and acknowledgements, uh, we did look at them, but Honorable Chair, on these acknowledgements, uh, I'm reporting that we have not finished verification. They are come from a number of institutions distributed over a wide geographical area. I'm requesting for additional time to look at them more thoroughly and report back to the committee. So are you trying to suggest that at the time of audit, you did not do that? At the time of audit, Honorable Chair, those acknowledgements were not provided, and that was the basis of the query. This 8,137,900. So, uh, honorable members, uh, maybe before I ask you to chip in, uh, Governor, do you have anything to say about this? Additional to your response. Oh, okay, maybe my team members. Uh, th thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, by by the time the audit was being done, most of the checks were still also with the with the parents, so we could not provide at that time. But subsequently. Uh, they were provided, Chair. Uh, I also want you to respond to what he has said. The acknowledgement uh, letters. 
that were not provided at the time of audit. Thank you, Chair. So, Chair, what happens is the institutions, when we when we give the, the checks to the beneficiaries, mm -hmm. the beneficiaries take the checks to the institution, say the school. Now, once the school receives the checks and presents, they send the school sends an acknowledgement to us that this that we have uh, we receive the funds for so and so, and this is the acknowledgement. So it's normally acknowledgement comes after the presentation of the checks, uh, chair by by the beneficiaries. Okay, uh, honourable members, uh, the mark the auditor. Yes, chair. Maybe just to explain further what my colleague has explained. If you look at some of the acknowledgement letters provided, and I'm looking at one uh, to by the school St. Catherine's girls, it's one of the appendixes, Chair. When you look at the check numbers, there's no relationship between that and the, the schedule that has been provided. So we need to go further and understand if this check was returned, what check was issued subsequently, and how does that relate to the schedule of um, or the letters of acknowledgement that have been uh, submitted, Chair? Thank you. Okay. Uh, members? Senator Kisang? Chair, uh, I mean, we can understand that because of COVID, maybe the checks could not come back here. But, uh, Chair, I just wanted to find out, is this really an efficient way of paying passaries where you write every check for each beneficiary? Or it is better to do maybe just one check or RTG, so that you also save on, uh, you, you do proper management of uh, bursary processes, because I think this is very inefficient. It's also very costly, because each transaction, there's a cost. I thought the governor, there should be a better way of uh, managing bursary. And vice again. Maybe you need to clarify what you, what you are saying, Senator. Uh, if you check, because I see they were written to institutions. Yes, but the uh, chair, Yes. If you check the institutions, I let me check. Uh, if you check each of the wards, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, I don't think uh, there was only one child, say in Tarbo Magnet High School, who got around 5,000. There should have been more. Maybe they need to tell us. Because I'm seeing several of 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, like a bad high school. And I don't think it was only one child who was in that particular school who was given a check of 5,000. And then also, where? Yeah, it, look, it looks like what they were doing, Chair, is uh, every ward, they were doing different checks by ward for the beneficiaries to the same institution, instead of uh, lumping them all together, Honorable Chair. Uh, and then also, uh, also what you are saying is that there was multiple checks. Yeah, multiple checks. The same institution. Yes. Yeah. I think that's what the auditor was raising. Yeah. So maybe Governor, you can re respond to that. Oh, okay, Chair, let, let me allow my CC finance. Easy Thank you, Chair. So the way we issue the checks, Chair, is um, they are issued uh, based on the ward. So for, let's say, students in, uh, in that same ward, say for one particular uh, institution, we give one check for those and we, we attach uh, the, the names of the beneficiary. So we give one check, for, but it will be at the ward level. Maybe Honorable Member was uh, of the opinion that probably for the entire county, for what, the same institution, we give one check. But the way we disperse is we disperse at the ward level and we go around dispersing individually. So for one institution, if we have five students chair, we write one check for the five students. But for the ward, Chair Honorable Chair. Uh, but uh, your presentation, maybe you needed to improve it so that you indicate the ward. So we know that, okay, actually it's indicated. It's indicated. It's indicated, the word is indicated. So there is, what you are trying to say is that there is no chance that in one word we have multiple checks for, for the same beneficiary. Uh, 
we, th th there's no chance, uh, Honorable Chair. Yeah, just uh, just thinking aloud. Is that efficient? Are you happy with that? Honorable Chair, um, I know the option for an RTGS would be the ideal one, uh, but the Chair, we, we, we go to the, the wards and physically uh, present the checks. So that, that may be, but we can take that advice, Honorable Chair. Mwajima, you know you have been a member of parliament. <laughs> and you know politically, <laughs> presentation of that check is a ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> it's a political ceremony. Uh, so that is uh, the challenge. Thank you, Chair, for rescuing me. You know, I'm doing it tomorrow again, the same, same story. It really gives us a lot of uh, political mileage and impetus. So I think it is the nature of politicians. So maybe Honorable Kisang thing as but, a <laughs> but you can also present them with the bank slips uh, uh, instead of the checks. <laughs> Whichever way, so long as we have the crowd and the clapping, the better. Yeah. I think uh, that is it. Thank you, Chair. Chair, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. The only issue is uh, if additional cost. Otherwise, uh, what I used to do in CDF, maybe I give my experience here? Yes. What we used to do in uh, Marakwet West is we, I, they used to do vetting at the ward level, actually basically at sublocation or even location. And then when the report is brought to the office, you group, you merge them, uh, and the, the list of all the beneficiaries, you put them in the notice board in each of the wards to say these are, have already gotten the beneficiary, I mean, gotten their loans, and the receipts are given to the parents, but the acknowledgement is uh, given to the county or the, the CDM. But uh, if Kotimoja believes that is good and he'll get re-elected, then there's no problem. <laughs> uh, auditor, any yes, additional sir. comments? Yes, Chair. I think uh, just to emphasize on that point, there's uh, on the bursary of stale checks, August 2022, we have Capsoas Ward where we have uh, two checks to the same school, uh, to friends Bukembe and both for 5,000. Are they from the same ward? Yes, yes. Same ward, Chair, Capsaos Ward, and same institution. Have you picked it? You maybe you can guide them which page so that it's it's on uh, the sheet you provided for bursary of stale checks 2022. Um, the check uh, ward backup house ward. Uh, the check numbers are 342 and 343, both for the same amount to the same school in the same ward. I think, Chair, what we are trying to emphasize is that the, the evidence as provided does not address the question, and therefore, as the auditor is requesting, they needs, they needs time to verify and confirm this okay. check, which one was replaced with, and then confirm with the acknowledgement so that then we are able to, support, uh, to assist the committee in interrogating this matter. Thank you, Chair. So, the auditor, how much time do you need? Uh, how much I think we need... Like three weeks, three to four weeks. Yeah, so that is um, 30 days. Yes, sir. So we will give you 30 days to verify the documents presented before us yeah. and write back to the committee uh, with your observation. Thanks, sir. Yeah, 30 days from today. Uh, please don't forget because we want that information to be part of our report writing process. So, 
uh, basically honorable members because the auditor has said that he needs time to verify i think we will uh, dispense with that query for now and proceed to the second query the second query was in the report for june 2021 failure to develop regulations to the act uh, auditor thanks chair uh, in the report of the auditor general on was in Gishu county bursary and skills development support fund for the year ended 30th june 2021 under report on lawfulness and effectiveness in use of public resources number two failure to develop regulations to the act the management has not developed regulations, policies, and procedures that would operationalize the Act and assist in the management, efficient utilization, and accountability of bursary funds contrary to Section 25.1 of the Wasingishu County Bursary and Skills Development Support Disbursement Act 2014. In the circumstances, the fund management is in breach of the law. Thank you. Governor, your management response. Okay, thank you, Chair. The management acknowledges the observation. At the time of this audit, the county had not developed a fund regulation to assist in the operationalization of the Act. However, during this financial year, 2023-2024, the county executive has developed a draft regulation to be forwarded to the county assembly for approval. Nonetheless, the Wasingishu County Bursary and Skills Development Support Fund Disbursement Act 2014 is currently undergoing a second amendment. The county is waiting for the amendment and approval from the, of the Act to, the, to be completed so as to incorporate the changes in the regulations and subsequently forward the same to the County Assembly for approval. That is in Annexure 2, a copy of draft regulation. 2B, copy of the advert for amendment of the Bursary Act. Uh, auditor, your comments? Uh, thank you, Chair. I think uh, we saw the draft, uh, and while that is uh, a work in progress, uh, we will still comment that uh, they have not developed uh, regulations to the Act uh, as we speak. Thank you. Uh, Governor, you have explained that the draft with the amendments. Where, what is the status of the amendments to the Act? Where are they now? Okay, Chairman, let my county secretary respond. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Uh, the draft regulations are ready at the County Executive Committee, but at the same time, the County Assembly is, uh, is in the process of amending the, the entire Act. So we are awaiting that process to be finalized so that we incorporate that in the, regulation, in the draft regulations in the cabinet and then send to the county assembly. We are fast-tracking that process. Okay. Uh, so uh, what, what indicatively, what time frame are you talking about? Uh, in the next three months, Honorable Chair, we should be through. In the next three months. That is the act, the amended act and the regulations. Yes. Members, your floor is yours. Hey, Chair, I think uh, the issue is uh, in one of the sections of the Act, you know, it was not explicit that they do regulations. It said may, so maybe they took that as, it's not a must. Maybe as they amend the Act, they can amend and say shall, so that it's mandatory that they do the regulations. Yes, uh, we noted the same problem with the CIA, where the Act says may. May is not mandatory. So, Auditor, how does it become a, an audit query? Thank you, Chair. Uh, while we acknowledge that the Act says may, it still does not bar them from doing the regulations. But the main issue is, as you have observed, there are a number of issues of management of bursaries that have been raised, right from, you can talk of the issue of how to prevent the double issuance, how to deal with somebody, the possibility of a, an applicant benefiting from two sources. There is real need to come up with regulations 
to operationalize the act. Because there are, no, there are a number of gaps which the act did not address and can only be addressed in regulations. That is the need to do regulations. Uh, but let me, I think there is need to do regulations, as they have also acknowledged. Thank you. Can I have a comment from our legal officer? Chair, uh, I'd just like to echo the uh, sentiments of the Office of the Auditor General, because uh, insofar as the Act, uh, Act uh, provides, there are certain things that are best placed in regulations, particularly with re respect to what he has said on procedure, how, how, how the process will be taken, will be undertaken, and, and so on and so forth, Chair. So I also wish to support those sentiments on the need for those regulations, particularly for the, that which is not captured within the, the uh, Parent Act Chair. So maybe uh, through the Governor, the County Secretary, who can tell us what is it that you are uh, amending? Does it cover these gaps? Yes, Honorable Chair, we have noted the, the concerns and the gaps that are existing even in the Act that will be addressed in the regulations as well as that amendment. So we will cover all those areas of uh, uh, bene uh, beneficiaries getting double maybe from CDF and other uh, agencies that are providing support. We will, we will be able to include all that in the regulations and even the framework of including the community leaders like chiefs, all that, we'll have all that in the regulations. Members, any further comment? I think this one, uh, uh, and again, sorry, Chair, that yes. uh, I, I support what the OIG has said, and I think this will apply to all the funds, so that you will never be having the same mistake again. So I think uh, going forward, we will address in each of the funds that we are going to present here. Yes, uh, so, so uh, maybe I just give direction that uh, this particular matter, since you have told the committee that the amendments are uh, ongoing and you need three months we are going to review it in the next uh, audit uh, meeting uh, and we expect that it should be done before you come uh, again for for the review of a report for 2023 uh, 2024 and maybe 2024 20, so, honorable members, uh, we will now proceed to the third query, which is uh, which is uh, unsupported use of goods and services. Auditor. Uh, thank you, Chair. In a report of the Auditor General on Wasingishu County Bursary and Skills Development Support Fund for the year ended 30th June 2022, under basis for qualified opinion, we have unsupported goods, unsupported use of goods and services. The statement of financial performance reflects use of goods and services amount of Kenya shilling 7 million 45,082 which as disclosed in note 7 to the financial statements includes lunch allowances amounting to Kenya shillings 2,971,880 and committee allowances amounting to Kenya shillings 3,300,000 all totaling to Kenya shillings 6,271,880. Management has not provided a plausible justification and rationale for the payment of lunch and committee allowances. In the circumstances, the accuracy, completeness, and regularity of the lunch and committee allowances of Kenya shillings 6,271,880 could not be confirmed. Uh, Governor, you are written response. Thank you, Chair. Kenya shillings 2,971,880 was lunch allowances paid as per SRC job group rate for officers on supervisory duties in the ward during the bursary award processes. The officer, officers worked overtime and during weekends to verify bursary application forms, writing and verification of payment vouchers and drawing of checks as at sub-county 
and ward offices. Kenya shillings three million three hundred thousand was amount was amounts paid to the to ward bursary appraisal committees for the five sittings during the financial year under review. This was as per the bursary act of 2014. Annex 1A and B are the copies of uh, supporting documents. Uh, auditor, you have comments on the response? Oh, the only comment that we have, Honorable Chair, is on the lunch allowances amounting to Kenya shillings 2,971,808. Now, I think in the documentation provided, management does not come out explicitly on what exactly these officers were doing in order to be paid this lunch allowance. Uh, thank you. So, auditor, what are you implying? You are implying that uh, what you need is uh, reasons for the for the meeting, not the documentation. What we need, honourable chair, first of all, is the approval, and this approval document will carry with it exactly what these officers are supposed to do wherever they are, so that they have then paid lunch. So, but what is your comment on the letters? I've seen the letters here from the letters from the fund administrator to the CEC education, CO education. Is the, that justification not sufficient? Chair, you can also check that letter dated 29 March 2018. I thought it's part of what uh, appointment of to what bursary and appraisal committees. I thought that that's one of the things that should be able to explain. Actually, there are several letters. Yeah. There are several letters from the fund administrator to the chief officer education. Uh, we also have uh, what Honorable is referring to, appointment letters. So what's your comment on that? Because uh, we have even uh, the purpose of the payment, those uh, payment schedules. Maybe you can comment on that, Auditor. Oh, I want to give an example of one of the letters here. Mm. Now, there is an internal memo from the fund administrator to CEO uh, dated 10th August. Uh, it says the following officers from Education and Finance were involved in verification of lists of beneficiaries from the 30 wards preparation of payment vouchers, examination, writing, and signing of checks, recording of necessary documentation in preparation for disbursement. Our understanding, if you look at this document, if you take officers from finance department, writing and signing checks, payment vouchers, we believe these are the normal duties of finance department. That is the argument, Chair. Can, can I hear the comment from uh, the county on that? The CC finance. Thank you, Chair. Yes, we agree that uh, uh, that is normally the normal um, duty, but this particular uh, Chair case was that these, these were very many checks, 
and they had to do them out of their, outside their station, their workstations. They were not writing them at the workstations. In fact, they were operating from the sub-county of offices because of the numbers. It takes quite a number, remember a chair? It takes uh, quite a number to verify uh, the application forms, to write the checks. So they, they, and, uh, and they were also engaging the ward appraisal committees who are based at the ward, at the, not the, the, the headquarters, where finance is, but at the ward, at the ward level. So these activities, Chair, Honorable Chair, were happening at the ward level. Thank you, Chair. And, and, and Honorable Chair, it was, they were also happening um, way into very late in the evenings and even over the weekends, on Saturdays, on Sundays, because we normally want to do all that and then present them uh, at the same time. So it's normally Adidas exercise, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Honourable members, any comment on that? Auditor, what's your further comment? Can be Mark or uh, yourself? Oh, thank you, Chair. I think that was uh, our concern. If you have officers appraising bursaries at the ward level, we did have, we were not really disturbed by that. But the preparation of checks. Have you had an opportunity to look at the documents? The documents that they have submitted? Yes, I have. What is your position on the documents? Yes, I've looked at the documents. And from our very looking at those documents, that's, that's the only issue we are concerned about. They have acknowledged their list, approved mm. by CO. But perhaps that is a point we thought they should reconsider. Because one of the issues they have raised is that uh, the allowances were within the SRC rates. They have also said that uh, those people worked overtime during weekends. And uh, for the committee allowances, it was paid to the ward bursary committees and they have indicated how they were appointed. So what I'm getting from you is your, your concern was that uh, those are people who are doing normal jobs. Uh, but you see for the ward committees, uh, they were processing the application. What, what's your comment on that? Because the ward committees are not employees. Yes, These I think. These are just villagers. Honorable Chair, for yeah. ward committees, insofar as the SRC circular is concerned, yeah. it was very explicit. Yeah. So we didn't have an issue with ward committees for as long as they were duly appointed and they performed. There's evidence of what they did. We didn't question that. So your main concern is the staff? Yes, yeah, staff. Who are supposed to be doing their normal job and yes. then uh, they are paid yeah. for doing their normal job? Yeah. I think one of the things the auditor is, uh, it's not coming out clear, but I think that is the query, is uh, there was no formal, you know, like the way we travel to Naivasha, you know, our committees, the, the lead clerk seeks for approval. So I think the issue is the county did not seek for an approval to say these particular employees are going to go to uh, this particular sub-county or a ward to do vetting of passeries and uh, seeking approval for facilitation to be paid out of pocket allowance while they are away from the headquarters. I think that is the only issue that uh, maybe the governor needs to be informed so that, you know, in our interim uh, recommendations, we advise them that going forward, even if it is, you know, the way auditor is speaking, uh, it has a normal duty, it is because there was no approval to send them out of the headquarters. So I think that is where the issue is, uh, Chair. Yeah, Chair, that advice is correct. I think uh, that's the way to go as we improve. Yeah. So in that case, I think moving forward, uh, for the staff who work under paid a salary, appropriate approvals must be sought. Uh, before such allowances are paid. 
and that will come in our interim recommendations uh, moving forward. Auditor Mark? Yes, Chair, that is correct. But uh, even as they give CISOIC approval, uh, the query also talks of justification and rationale. I think that's also very important when it comes to approval. What's the justification and rationale to work outside office? Thank you, yeah. Chair. Yeah, so the, the rationale, justification must be indicated in the approval. So that we are, uh, we are going to be lenient on that because it's the first time you are uh, appearing on the fund. So next time it appears, the officers involved will be surcharged. Yeah, will be surcharged for, for that. Because it, I think 2,900 is a lot of money, 2 million. 2.9 million, it's a lot of money. You can buy how many acres of land? 6.2 actually. It's a lot of money, Governor. 